Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're going to be talking about a, a couple of different um, holes that you can drill, well, not necessarily holes, but modifications to those holes that you can drill um, into your part. So the first is counterbore. So counterbore symbol um, precedes the diameter symbol and it has a numeric value representing the diameter of the counterbore. Okay, so if we look right here, this is the diameter. That's the diameter of the counterbore. And then the depth symbol, which comes after, which is this one right here, just tells you how deep do you drill that counterbore. And that shows you the number right there. So there's a space in between the two, but there is no space in between the number and the symbol. The number and the symbol. The spot face symbol is very similar to the counterbore, except for it has that SF inside of it. And the depth is not specified right next to the diameter. Instead, that's specified from a dimension. So right here, this dimension tells me how deep my spot face needs to be. Now, why is that? Well, that's mostly because spot face are not always, but most often drilled into a curved surface. This is to allow a fastener to have a nice flat surface to attach to. For example, if I have that curved surface and I try to, okay, here's my hole, I try to pull a, you know, a nut on top of this or a bolt head on top of this, well, it's going to be offset. It's going to have this big gap right here. But if I then put a spot face in it, you know, cut it out like this, well, then my fastener can lay flush against the surface. Okay, it can lay flush against the surface. But, you know, you can't necessarily tell where to start. I'm not going to say, well, you're going to mention it from here and go 0.65 down or from here and go 0.65 down or 0.25 or 0.125. Usually um, spot faces are fairly shallow. No, you're going to use it from the bottom. So you can say, okay, well, after you've drilled, I want these, this surface to be X height above the bottom surface. Okay, so you're going to have to look at another dimension to see what it means. Um, this is just to give clarity so there's no misunderstanding about where the dimension will be taken from if you try to use the depth symbol, which is not allowed. Okay, countersink symbol. symbol. It's a V, which makes sense because if you look at countersink, it kind of looks like a V. Bring it in, it touches. <gasps> there's the V. It precedes the diameter symbol, and then what you'll have right after that is an angle usually an angle that tells you exactly how, what the angle of that surface is when I'm going right here. What is the angle? Well, it's 100 degrees, 100 degrees. But you see some X's in there. You see a 6X and you see just that X in between the 0.438 and 100 degrees. Well, what does that mean? It means number of places and by depending on its usage. So if there's no space between the number and the letter X, so right here, 6X, that's telling me that there's six of these countersink holes and that this dimension applies to all of them. This dimension applies to all of them. So go back right here. There are six of these diameter holes, six of these countersink holes, and one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't have to put a dimension on every single one. I can just put a dimension on one of them and say, okay, this applies to all of them. The second X, though, has a space between the number and the X on both sides, and that means by, which is often used when denoting countersinks. It tells you the diameter of the countersink, and then it tells you um, the angle of the countersink. So that'll be it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I hope you are enjoying this. So see you soon. Bye-bye.